Welcome to another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. You see, prior to 1967, if these couples were to join me on stage, they would have to look like this. Because this would have been illegal and probably still makes you a little uncomfortable. I'm joined now by Rachel and Brian of season 13 of The Bachelorette, most notably uh, the first black bachelorette in the show's history, also joined by Lindsey Vaughn, Olympic gold medalist and PK star defenseman for the New Jersey Devils. Uh, but I want to start with an email that I, that I received, and, and I really want to focus on the interracial aspect of all of this, because someone asked me, they said, Emmanuel, as a black man, do you feel betrayed when you see a black woman with a white man? And I might not necessarily say I feel betrayed, but I feel some type of way. Rachel, you and I, we go back. You did. And so uh, I I'm going to tell you something that I haven't told you yeah. before. Uh, 2017, I'm watching The Bachelorette, and I see finally they chose a black woman. They chose a black queen. And I'm thinking to myself, surely, surely she's going to pick a black king. I know nothing about Brian, like nothing about Brian. I never met the guy. But all I see is Rachel picked a guy who is seemingly white. Um, I felt some type of way about that. What would you say to someone who shared those sentiments? What would you say to them? Well, friend, I don't even know if I should say friend after you just said that to me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But honestly, I had to say, you know what, my journey of love can't be any different just because the color of my skin is. And people can't judge me for picking someone who doesn't look like me. Like, I, I feel like they expect me to pick someone who looks just like me, but that's not fair. They should just want me to fall in love with whoever it is that I vibe with. You know, I, I think about this quote, and I was thinking about this yesterday. It says, um, if the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? We all remember that. If the enemy of my enemy is my friend, then the friend of my enemy is my enemy. And I was thinking, historically speaking, white people are the enemy of black people. So when you see a black person with a white person, then all of a sudden you're like, wait, you're with the enemy. Have you lost friends based on who you love being a black man? I wouldn't say I've lost friends. I've created, there has been a lot of difficult moments with people that I'm very close to that um, I have been, it's been very hurtful and I don't know exactly how to approach it. I don't know how to communicate our relationship to them in a way that they understand. I don't know how to get rid of racism and just allow them to see him for the person that he is. I, I don't know how to do that and that is, that is why I want to talk mm -hmm. because I <laughs> no I, I love it. I love I'm gonna tell you something I love every moment of it why because it what this promotes is growth and strength in our relationship and I'm not against that adversity is a great thing when people show true colors when every this world is full of a lot of people not everybody's going to be accepting of everything do you not have a problem with the fact of when black people are seen with white people to a degree, to the black person, like, you've lessened your blackness. Like, Rachel, you are an intelligent woman, law degree, well-spoken, you're with Brian, good dude, but he's not black. People look at you and you're like, Rachel shouldn't even be talking. Like, she, she's, not even, <laughs> she's not even black. I've experienced that, and hearing you talk about your, the way you grew up, you've probably experienced that your entire life. I've always been told that I wasn't black enough. And I'm not even, by, I don't have, you know, any white in my blood. Actually, I don't know if that's true, but just, I don't know if that's true. But I'm just saying, like, I am, not, <laughs> I am not biracial is what I'm saying. Like, I'm a black woman, and I've always been told that I wasn't black enough because of the way that I grew up, the experiences that I had. And so I, you know, to be 100% honest, and you know this, it was something that I fought before I came onto The Bachelor. Up until I was 30, I really didn't date seriously outside of my race because I felt like society, not my parents, not my friends, society was telling me I had to pick a black man. I got an email and it pierced my heart. She said, can you help me? What can I do as a white woman to be more accepted by black women? What would you say? I don't know the answer to that. I, I feel like, you know, PK's family and 
um, his friends, his family's friends, everyone has been so accepting of me. And I just try to be kind to every person that I meet. And even if they hate me because I'm with a strong black man, I'm still the same person. I know that I'm a good person. I know that- It doesn't you know, make you sad. It does make me sad because, it, actually not sad, it makes me feel extremely guilty. Why? Because I am taking a strong black man away from them. And, but I love him and I, I mean, I shouldn't be penalized for that, I don't think, but there is the reality that that is true. What then would you say, Rachel, because you are the black woman, what yeah. can a white woman do to be more accepted by black women if the only reason she's not accepted is because she's with a black man? There's nothing you could do. And, I, and, I, and I, what you said like hit me when you said you feel guilty. And you shouldn't feel guilty for loving who you love. That's their problem. There's nothing that you can do to change that. And, and to be honest, I used to be that black woman. I'm, and I, I, I feel bad saying that out loud and now being in my own interracial relationship, but I was 100% ignorant. I would look and I would see a white woman with a black man and I would, and I would automatically assume certain things. And that's because I was so close-minded. It's, it's a heart issue. And, and, and I say that because I used to be that person. And I'm so glad I'm not that person anymore. And if I go back to when I was in that place, there was nothing that, that you could do other than leave him to make me change my mind, which isn't fair. You know, for my purposes, is that, do you feel like that applies to me as well, as far oh. as a black man looking at me? Yeah, I remember the first time I dated outside my race. It wasn't serious, it was before The Bachelorette. And I remember, I felt every black man was looking at me like, oh, there she goes, we lost another one. It was my first date, and I just remember wanting to wear a t-shirt that said, I swear this is my first time. Why should I have to think like that? I actually had, there was a, a friend of mine, um, and he actually later apologized for it, but he actually, when I was with Lindsay, uh, I don't even know if I told you no, this. No, you didn't, no. Um, but he broke he me down about like, dude, you need to be with like a sister, like you need to, and I think he had a couple drinks, but I, I never stopped him or put him in his place. I just let him speak. I just let him speak because I said, you know, th this is a lack of education. And we also have to be aware of what hate is and what a lack of intelligence is. When I was in college as a college athlete, if there was ever a black man dating a, a, white, a white girl, a white woman, it would be said, oh, you're with the master's daughter. Like, oh, you're, you're with like the slave master's daughter. Yes. Kind of as if that was the black man's way to whip the master back, right? Like yeah. the white man is, is, in, is a king in his, in his palace and you can't as a black man do anything to touch the white man in society, but you can do something to, to, to lie with, to be with the princess. Don't you think that, and what would you say to the black people who have that ideology of kind of like, you're, with, you're, you're still with the traitor, you're with an enemy. Well, I would say that those people are searching for something and I found it and it's happiness. I don't have to define what makes me happy to anybody, no one. I don't have to define it to my parents, my family, no. It, it, uh, the only, I have to live with this person <laughs> my whole life, right? So I'm sorry, I'm not coming home to you, to you, to you, to anybody here. Even if, because I, I have to dig in on this point because I would be remiss not to, even if there's the ideology that Lindsay's ancestors would have oppressed your ancestors. You don't feel any guilt in that. I feel guilty by you just saying that. No, but, like, but it's that's a, like That's how you would think. Like I'm not associated with what people four, five, six, seven generations did before me. I mean, but because I, I'm white. I think I, it's hypocritical though. Okay. Okay, so if I'm talking about, I'm talking about changing the game, I'm talking about changing the narrative, and all, all of us as a black culture are talking about changing. Well, you can't want change in one ways and not the other way. If we're talking about accepting people for who they are and seeing people for who they are and loving people for who they are, and if somebody respects you, respect them back, then it should matter what color the person, people are saying this is not about black and white. This is a human rights issue. In, in closing, there was one email that I received. Y'all so cute. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, um, there was one email that I received and I responded to this woman. I said, I promise I will get it answered. And she said, Emmanuel, 
how can I love my black man, my black husband better? I'm gonna ask you, PK, to answer that question to Lindsay while also realizing you're answering it to the world. How can a white woman love her black man better? The number one thing that I've learned is that one of the toughest things in my life that I thought was gonna come was gonna be who was I was gonna share my life with. You have to let that person in. They have to understand you. They have to know how you deal with things. So for Lindsay, she doesn't have to do anything different. She asks questions all the time, she's there. The responsibility is on me to open it up and not keep that stuff sheltered inside. All I have to do is let her in and she has to continue to just ask questions. Mm -hmm. Rachel, I guess end it by Brian. How They're killing us over here. <laughs> <laughs> the PDA department. How, um, how would you say Rachel's a black woman? How can your white um, husband love you better. One of the reasons that I was so against dating outside of my race is because I felt like nobody could understand me like a black man can. And I think that that thinking is problematic because I understand me and I get it. And what I need from a partner is someone who is willing to understand things as the way that I do, is willing to ask questions. One time he said, are you offended by me asking so many questions? And that hurt me because I felt like, no, I'm not offended. I am so appreciative that you wanna understand, you wanna grow, you wanna learn, and you wanna try your best to get things the way that I can. At the end of the day, he's not black, so he's never gonna extend my experience fully. But the fact that he's trying to and he wants to, that's all I need. That's all I need out of a partner. And I think that that goes beyond just race. That's all you need out of a partner, period. Somebody who's willing to understand things the way that you that you should as a couple and y'all can learn together and move forward together. I've learned so much being with Rachel as far as black culture. Like I thought I knew a lot about black culture growing up, um, you know, musically, you know, culturally and whatnot, but I've learned so much more being with her as far as educating myself. I mean, we've sat down and watched movies, you know, 13th, Just Mercy, um, you know, movies that really show the disparity and the, the horrific things that happen to African Americans on a daily basis. And I think that that's something that non-blacks need to really take a look at. You know what I mean? Because I think that'll really open their eyes. Well, well um, Rachel, Brian, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lindsay PK, it actually was supposed to be your wedding today. I know. It was. I know. But Corona. But but we're you guys. You I'm are. totally expecting an invite <laughs> next year. Here we are. We better be there now. We're all friends. Yes. Yes. Um, but, but, but genuinely thank you all. And um, thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. If change is truly gonna occur, this, this is how it'll start.